हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू स्किल्स बिल्ड ट्रेनिंग यूट्यूब चैनल माई सेल्फ मोहम्मद जुबैर एंड दिस चैनल इज ऑल अबाउट शोइंग यू हाउ टू बिकम एन आई टी प्रो रेडी फैस्ट सो द टॉपिक ऑफ टूडेज वीडियो इज ओ एस आई मॉडल एक्सप्लेन फॉर बिगिनर्स सो विदाउट एनी फर्दर अड्यू लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड OSI stands for Open System Interconnection Model. It is a conceptual model and it was developed and created by an international organization for standardization. They enable the diverse communication systems to communicate by using the standard protocols that are being used today. If we talk about in layman language, the OSI provides a standard and pathway for the computer systems to communicate just like us humans we do not know the languages of every region of the world for example a person from china might not be able to understand the language of the us or canada so to communicate with each other they must develop a way and obviously they will have to follow some rules so in the end they both will get to a point where they both will be able to communicate with each other effectively the same goes for the computer system some of them might be running on different protocols than others and some of them might be working and running on different networks than your systems and to make them communicate with each other there must be a way so that they can communicate exchange the data with each other here comes the osi model it is just like a universal language for computer networking in this system we split up communication cycle into seven layers and each one of them is stacked on each other now let's dive deep into our today's topic and find out what is the osi model and how it works basically we have seven layers in osi model and the first one is application layer then we get presentation layer and after that we have session layer and then we have transport layer transport layer is followed by network layer and the second last layer is data link layer and the last one is physical layer when you are sending the data the application layer will be the first one and when you are receiving the data the physical layer will be the first one so there is no universal rule or hard and fast rule that which layer is the first one and which layer is the last one so many people use application layer as the first one and many people use physical layer as the first one so it all depend on your use and if you are on receiving end or the sending end now let's have a small definition or small explanation of each layer at the application layer the interaction between the human and the system takes place at this layer the application accesses the network the presentation layer ensures that the data is in the right form and format and this is where the data encryption takes place the session layer is responsible for maintaining the connection between the devices or the two networks it is also responsible for controlling the ports and the sessions as well the transport layer works on the data which gets transferred to the session layer and breaks it into the segments in simple words by segment we mean small parts it is also responsible for assembling the segments when it receives the data the tcp protocol works on this layer the next layer which is the network layer has two functions the first one is to break the segments into network packets the second function which it performs is to reassemble those segments on the receiving end and the ip protocol works on this layer the data link layer is responsible for establishing and terminating the connection between the two nodes which are connected physically the last layer which is known as the physical layer is responsible for the physical connection between the network nodes and it can be through some physical cables or through a network 
in modern day internet both means of connection are getting used that was a little explanation of each and every layer of osi model and one thing which is really important to understand here and that is the output of one layer acts like as an input for the next layer and now let's have brief details about what each layer does and what are their responsibilities to better understand the working of osi model let's start with the application layer at this layer the data gets interacted with the layer directly through the use of some applications like it can be your web browser some software email client or it can be your gaming engine one thing which needs to be clear here and that is software applications are not part of the application layer instead the application layer makes sure and is responsible for the protocols on that layer and for the data manipulation on which the software depends to present the data to the user at the application layer we have some protocols we have http https and smtp http and https gets used for communication over the internet and get used for the accessibility to different websites and web pages smtp the abbreviation of which is simple mail transfer protocol and it is used for email communication this means whenever you send an email or receive one from someone smtp works in the background let's talk about the presentation layer the responsibility of this layer is to prepare the data so that application layer can use it in other words this layer prepares the data presentable for the application on its upper layer there is a strong possibility that the two communicating devices might be using different encoding methods so there must be a common method so that both of these devices can communicate with each other this layer which is the presentation layer is responsible for the translation of the incoming data into a syntax for the application layer to understand that data for the security concerns if the communication is taking place under the encryption connection there is a need to add the encryption for the sender and for the receiver the decryption must be added as well so that both layers can send and receive the data securely the application layer is responsible for that it encrypts the data for the sender and decrypts it for the receiver and this is how the encrypted communication takes place the next layer is session layer communication between two devices is only possible if they have a connection between them obviously without a connection there will be no communication this layer is responsible for opening and closing of the connection between the two devices which are going to transfer data and communicate with each other the time in which they keep on communicating and the time when the connection gets closed we call this time frame a session this is why we call this layer as session layer this layer also makes sure that the session is open and working till the data is getting transferred and devices are communicating with each other and as soon as the data transfer and communication ends this layer closes the session immediately it do this to make sure no resources are getting wasted the session layer also implements the synchronization by the concept of checkpoints to understand it in a better way let's take a scenario let's say you wanted to send a file of size 50 megabytes and as you sent the file in the middle of the transfer your connection gets lost or because of any other reason your file failed now what you have to do you have to transfer the file again from scratch imagine if this happened twice or thrice and you have a file size of like 100 gigabytes in this way a lot of time will get wasted and a lot of resources will be consumed again and again 
to avoid all of that time wastage and resource consumption, the session layer implements the checkpoints. For example, if you have sent the file of size 50 megabytes, the session layer will put a checkpoint after every, let's say 3 megabytes or 5 megabytes. Now, in case if your data gets lost or connection gets interrupted and 34 megabytes of file was transferred already, as we had checkpoint after every 5 megabytes, so the data or file till 30 megabytes will be secured. It means we only have to send the remaining 20 megabytes again. And this is how we can save a lot of time and resources of the network. And this is why we implement checkpoint into the session layer. The next layer which we have is the transport layer. We came to know that session layer is responsible for the connection or session between the two devices. This layer, which is transport layer, is responsible for the communication between two devices. And this communication will be end-to-end. -end. By end-to-end, -end, we mean there is no interruption from third party. As I have told you at the start of the video, the output of one layer is input for the other layer. The same will happen here. As the transport layer will take the data from the session layer and it will divide or break the data into small chunks of data. We call these chunks as segments. After that, these segments are transferred to the layer below the transport layer, which is the network layer. When the transport layer is on the receiving end, it is responsible for the collection of the segments and reassembles them so that the session layer can use those segments as a single unit. The transport layer has another duty to perform and that is to implement the error control and flow control. By error control, it makes sure that the data received on the receiving end is complete and in case if it is not, it requests the retransmission of the data. In flow control, the transport layer takes care of the transmission speed. For example, let's say the sending device has a fast connection and the receiving device has a slow connection. In that case, the data can create a bottleneck in the communication channel as the receiving device has low capacity of handling the data. Flow control makes sure that the sender does not overload the receiver having a slow connection and it makes sure that sender does not send the data more than the receiving capacity of receiving device and that is how we implement the flow control. The next layer we are going to discuss here is the network layer. This layer is responsible for facilitating the data to get transfer between the two different networks. It is very usual that the two devices communicate on a different network but if they are on the same network there is no need for the network layer. But in case, if the devices are on two different networks, the network layer breaks the segment which it received from the transport layer into smaller parts and we call them packets. When it is on the receiving end, it assembles those packets and transfers them to the transport layer. This layer tries to find the best possible and available pack for the data to reach its destination and by doing so the data gets to destination in more easier and faster way and this phenomena is called as routing let us know if you want to know about routing we will have a video on it the second last layer is the data link layer the working of the data link layer is almost similar to the network layer the only difference is that the data link layer transfers the data between the two devices which are on the same network. Apart from that, the data link layer takes the packets from the network layer and further divides them into smaller parts and we call those parts as frames. Just like the network layer, the data link layer is also responsible for the flow and error control but only in the intra-network communication which means two devices will be on same network. The last layer we have is physical layer. As the name says, 
this layer will have something physical attached to it and obviously that physical equipment will be involved in the data transfer it can be a switch cable or a router and as you might know that the data get transferred in the form of data stream which is composed of bits which are ones and zeros so at the physical layer the data gets transformed into ones and zeros bit stream one thing needs to be taken care of here and that is both devices must also agree on the signal convention so that both can understand that which bit is zero and which one is one that was all about how and what are the responsibilities of each layer in the osi model and at the last let's have a daily life scenario to better understand the working of each layer let's say you want to send a message to your friend you will write or compose your message into any of your messaging application and when you will send this message your message will first pass on to the application layer which will then select the protocol for the message to pass on to the next layer which is presentation layer then the presentation layer will compress your data and it will pass it on to the session layer and now the session layer will start the communication session now the data will go on to the transport layer and here the data will be segmented and these segments will now be broken into packets at the network layer the packets will further be broken down into frames and the data link layer will do that and then the data link layer will deliver those frames on to the physical layer and now the frames will be converted into streams of bits which is obviously composed of zeros and ones and at last those bits will be sent through some physical medium and that can be a cable a modem or a router so that was all about how the data will be sent from your end and now let's understand that how the data will be received at your friend's end once your friend's device receives the streams of bits through some physical medium after receiving the stream of bits the data will pass through the same layers on your friend's device but this time it will be in opposite order as i have told you earlier that if you are on sending end then the first layer will be application layer and if you are on receiving end then the physical layer will be the first layer first of all the physical layer will convert those bits of zeros and ones into frames which got passed to the data link layer now the network layer will play its part and will convert those frames into packets and now the transport layer will reassemble those packets and it will convert them into segments after that the data will go on to the session layer at your friend's end and the session layer will pass the data to the presentation layer and after that it will end the communication session after that the presentation layer will pass the data to the application layer after removing the compression on it which will be applied to the data and at last the data will be presented to your friend by the application layer so this is how all the communication takes place in the osi model and with that we got to the end of today's video i hope i was able to make you understand the concepts and working of osi model it's each layer in the possible simplest way and i hope you were able to learn a lot of new things related to osi model if that is the case please leave a like and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon along with it if you have something to ask please leave a comment below we will get back to you as soon as possible till the next video take care